Hey, what's up, everybody? Tip Tips Podcast back at it again, once again. Of course, Eduardo here in the mix with my boy Brett, as always. I mean, we're just pretty much stuck together here forever. Well, stuck. until the casket drops, like they say, right? <laughs> But dude, what the <laughs> fuck, man? You keep changing the scenery, man. Where are you at? This is this your new penthouse suite up in Seattle? I think this is Miami. <laughs> My, oh shit, maybe the, the city Miami. that never closed, huh? Yeah, the, but but the state that never closed. Hey, I uh, I am rocking the hat that you got me. This is uh, my birthday present from Eddie, and uh, but I just noticed something when I was looking in the mirror before I jumped on the oh, stream. No. Oh, no. I'm like, okay, here. man, I'm I'm kind of looking like this is kind of like how proud boys dress right you know like Jesus they've got the whole, the whole patriotic thing oh, and got, they man. always wear like the the golf shirts and i'm like man I, i've got sort of a a proud boy vibe going on but um but but i'm not a proud boy <laughs> i'm not affiliated in any way shape or form um but but i was thinking about you know uh, the difference between them and antifa and I'm like, boy, if if I like gun to my head had to choose how I wanted to dress, I would definitely choose the pa- the proud boy way of dressing <laughs> um, simply just because it's just I guess it's just a better way to dress. And I don't <laughs> smell like dumpster. You like you like their swag a little <laughs> bit more, you know, they're more, they're more well fitted, like you said, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know that every, every time I see like the Antifa guys, they, they look all frail and they I'm just like they just look like they smell like a dumpster <laughs> <laughs> so the apparel that's kind of more eye catching to you that's kind of how you're based it off of i mean you know proud boys look like they just were all just like a bunch of frat dudes and they were all like pumping weight at the golf club and then they were just like you know drinking their uh i don't know what what they would drink maybe some bud light and uh <laughs> they were like hey there's a protest down, down. Let's go. <laughs> they're loading up in their big four by four pickups. They all thought it was a party. And then they, little did they know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's no. I, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. dude, uh, I definitely want to bring up for, uh, you know, start off this episode right off the get. Um, let's talk about your, you making these. Uh, you have a video out. You want to tell the people that probably haven't seen or come across it on what it entails. Um, it has to do with Cardano. Am I saying it right? Cardano? Cardano, yeah. Cardano, okay. Yeah. It's like, is there okay? For, so first off, before you answer that question, does that have like a significant meaning, Cardano, or is this just something that just kind of came out of the sky? No, and, Cardano. Uh, used? So uh, the CEO of Cardano is his name is Charles Hoskinson, and he's a mathematician okay. and just brilliant man. I mean, just brilliant. And um, he is also the he's the co-founder of Cardano, which is the okay. number three crypto by market cap. But then he's also the co-founder of Ethereum, which is number two in market cap. So mm. he's the co-founder of the second and largest, most popular crypto in the world. And nobody knows who uh, the founder of, of Bitcoin is Bitcoin because was, yeah. it went by a, a pseudonym. So um, but anyway, so, yeah, he's just uh, a brilliant man. So Car- anyway, so he names all of his projects after um after other ma- mathematicians of the past. And so okay, okay. Cardano was a mathematician, I believe, out of Italy. And, okay. uh, and Italy's loving it because, uh, you know, it brings them a lot of pride. Mm. And, uh, and so Cardano is pretty popular in Italy right now. Mm, okay, okay, okay. It's a pretty unique name too, Cardano. I was just like, dang, that's kind of uh, out of the norm, I guess you could say. But dude, so you've been making videos, I mean, and it's uh, be- getting uh, well uh, receptive, like like people are actually watching, commenting, and it seems like it's kind of like a welcoming community, you know, like the Bitcoin yeah. community. So that's awesome. And uh, I mean, just kind of, t- so, so why, what made you do that? Because it was kind of out of nowhere until you, I think you forwarded it to me. I'm like, oh shit, this it's pretty legit. Like you found something that, you know, you really wanted to go you know, off on your own and, and just kind of do a little TED talk, you know, kind of one-on-one for the people that may not be too well informed of what, you know, uh, crypto in general, but Cardano, what, what it really is, but what made you like, I mean, what, what made you do it? So, okay. Well, it's, it's funny because the, the fire, the iron has been in the fire for a long time, um, mm. not making videos, but, but getting into crypto. Yeah. Uh, and so in the background, I've been, I've been sort of about a year ago, I was invited to, start investing in crypto and i'm like i don't know i you know this digital money doesn't appeal to me because you know i was more of like a silver and gold guy if i Mm -hmm. want to preserve my wealth i want to i want 
you know, you know, silver and gold have been around for 6,000 years. Uh, it's uh, throughout the whole entire world that has always been the standard. When you talk about wealth, when you talk about the value of money, it's always held to the standard of gold or silver. Yeah. But then, and, and so, so I only saw crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies as just digital money. Mm-hmm. But the, then I think, um, I don't know what it was that got me really into it the latest, but um, my buddy, he approached me recently and, and he said, you know, hey, I just want you to know that Cardano is getting ready to do some massive things. Like they're getting ready to um, uh, release, uh, they're, they're, well, for right now, they're 90% decentralized, which means once they are 100% decentralized, then there's a good chance that a lot more people are going to hear about Cardano because mm. they, uh, I, I believe that's one of the main things keeping them off of Coinbase, which is the major um, uh, cryptocurrency exchange in, in the crypto world. And, uh, and anybody on cr- Coinbase is, you know, that's where, that's where you want to be because there's sure. just the easiest way. Although if you are, uh, interested in buying Cardano right now, you can go to Bitrix. Uh, Bitrix is a uh, an exchange, and it's a company out of Seattle, actually. A, oh, interesting. An ex-Microsoft security guy was uh, started that company. So you can, uh, you can go through there, 3% fee, whatever. But anyway, so the crypto world, I learned more about it, and things started popping up. And let me tell you, this is... So I, I I'm started a channel, and I wanted people to know what this was like when it hit me when i started reading these articles i'm like holy shit people need to hear this stuff people need to know this stuff and and then i just realized that like when you look at crypto on um on youtube when you look at it's just a bunch of uh basically p- kids i i don't want to you know i don't want to <laughs> offend anybody but i mean it's just a bunch of people that even I, like I'm looking at them and I'm like, I don't think you quite understand what it is. All you're doing it. You're treating cryptocurrency. Like it's a stock exchange. Like we're just talking about stocks or whatever, but you're not actually talking about the stuff that the, the Liberty, the freedom, the uh, anonymity, the uh, all of the different things that we live in a fully digital world. And and in Edward Snowden's book, uh, permanent record, he talked about us being in the last generation Edward Snowden and I are the same age. And he said that, that our generation is the last generation to have lived in the pre digital world and post digital or, and, and current digital world. So meaning everything that it like, you know, my children's lives has been digital, digital. Yeah, you're Pictures, right. That is Facebook, crazy. Everything. Right. And so, um, so now that we're in this the digital world, one thing that we've seen is that um, when it comes to government, they have a lot of data on us. When it comes to big companies such as Facebook, Google, Amazon, they have so much data on us. And there's just nothing. It feels like we no longer have the privacy or the anonymity that we used to have when before the Internet was around. Yeah, and that's so, wild, and, yeah. Right. And so so one thing that um so Bitcoin came up during the protest. There was an article out of time uh, where they were talking about um the George Floyd protest. <clears throat> and what they were saying was that there were a lot of people in the black community that were using Bitcoin as a peaceful protest against the US dollar. Meaning if you if you you start using your money, you start putting your money into other other areas other than your government's um, um, chosen denomination or chosen uh, currency, then then you are basically taking their you're you're taking the win from their sale. Mm, okay, then, I see what you're saying. Okay, right. And so in this country right now, we're focused on a lot on the black community about the racial injustices of the past. But I would like to just also note that it's not just black people that are 
um, witnessing and experiencing uh, the ostrich, ostrich, whatever that word, ostracization, <laughs> hmm. being ostracized. And um, um, it, it, it's there, it seems like the government, they always pick a boogeyman. And uh, I would say that ever since January 6th of this year, that that new boogeyman has been conservatives. If you are someone who voted for Trump and you have conservative leanings, conservative values, you are the new enemy under the United States. And so one thing I want to uh, spread to everyone, just to everyone, liberty has no color. Liberty has no party affiliation. Liberty has no anything. Liberty is there for all of us. Liberty is is there. It's fairness. It's equality. It's equity. It's all of that stuff. And and that's so how this ties in with with crypto technology, cryptocurrency is um, it basically so the U.S. dollar, what they want to do, what the U.S. is trying to do and China is trying to do also is they're trying to create a, uh, a digital form it's like how you noticed that we had a coin shortage last year yeah right so whatever happened with that um well they Did just we... said that there was nobody at the minting places that labor was down and then you know hmm. probably um because everybody it was a worldwide pandemic probably people couldn't ship the raw materials that's what you're saying mint and so uh they couldn't they couldn't mint enough coins but also we've we've seen years that you know it takes it costs 2.2 cents to produce a penny so why would you spend extra money to do it you know other than it's the law we have to it's the law well that's kind of ridiculous it's kind of ridiculous that we have to do something that is actually against our own best interest just because it's a law spend money to make more money it's more expensive than the penny <laughs> Yeah, I don't get it. It's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of backwards to me, but you're right. I mean, dude, we who doesn't have pennies? I have a fucking little like bin full of pennies. It's like, why? Why? I don't even carry cash anymore. I don't carry quarters or all that. I hate it. You know, so I just have them in this little like little piggy bank. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can have them. Go ahead, take them. Yeah, yeah. Well, we uh I know I you know, well, the thing is is uh the copper. Um, I I don't know what year it is. I think it's nineteen every anything below nineteen eighty three. It's one hundred percent copper, and mm. uh, so people are keeping like there are literally penny hoarders because people know that um, that the government has continued to to make something that is actually worth more in the material than it is. It on is an actual denomination. Yeah. See, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's yeah. And so, so there's penny hoarders out there right now and they're just waiting for the government to finally say, okay, it, it, it's no longer a denomination. Uh, you, you're, you're, because right now it's illegal to um, melt it down for its, uh, its metal value. So how can they tell though, if you did that, they couldn't, they couldn't. <laughs> Hey, want to go melt some pennies after this? Hey, want to <laughs> go? Want to go make some copper? <laughs> yeah, they couldn't. Um, but but a lot of people like you know, I, I'm sure it's been done, and you know, maybe, maybe that's why we haven't seen pennies. <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but anyway, and so so a lot of people want to preserve our wealth, and I and I think we're stepping into a bear market. I'm not a financial advisor, just so everyone knows. But disclaimer, I, disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah, uh, yeah, you just got to protect yourself. But um, I think we're getting ready to go into bear market. If you've looked at your stocks lately, they've been taking a hit. They've been taking a hit, and um, but uh, so back to the the U.S. dollar. So one thing they're flirting with is going with the digital dollar. So there was an interesting meeting with uh, Secretary. Uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, and she was at a policy roundtable um, in middle the middle of February, and they were she was talking about the threat of Bitcoin. Basically, she was spreading FUD, uh, fear, uncertainty, doubt about about Bitcoin, and uh, and just you know she's you, Bitcoin is the is the the current boogeyman of the United States, but really she's talking about cryptocurrency in general. Mm. Um, but she says that Bitcoin is being used by um, it's inefficient for one, you know, it uses a lot of electricity and and we're in the middle of a climate crisis, you know, where where we're we need to stop all the consumption and government needs to control everything, yada, yada, yada. 
and and the people that are actually spending bitcoin are using it for nefarious reasons they're laundering the money they're you know they're they're drug dealers they're pimps they're you know you name it she like if if whatever scares the public that's the label she's using as a bitcoin spender so the same shit they're doing with the physical money now yeah well that's <laughs> like, the thing the i mean literally there there there's more criminals using cash for all of yeah. the things that she says that they are doing with with crypto um and and so not it's, saying it's, it's a good thing you know but i'm just saying it's the same shit you know yeah i mean i mean criminals are gonna use whatever is worth value i mean you know there's nothing but what she's afraid of is the the anonymity that that bitcoin uh, offers but it offers the same anonymity as cash but what they're trying to do is basically give us a, a digital dollar and then the the here's and the digital dollar it's it's centralized means that right now they can't see where every single dollar is being spent right all i yep. got to do is go to the atm take out my cash they can't see where it where it's going yep. well we're at 28 trillion dollars now in the national debt and we're probably going to hit 30 trillion uh after after this 1.9 trillion dollar um stimulus package passes damn and, we're gonna you know so we're gonna be 30 trillion we're, basically we're at the point of no return we <laughs> we will america will not exist we we are going the way of rome um western rome that is and rome when when rome fell it was this type of stuff that was happening where um they started you know putting out um more fake metals in the silver so they, they were still calling it silver but it was actually more fake metals they were spread into the wars they had cultures from all over the world and so rome lost its identity and and so we've always called um that like we talk about open borders and all that uh where we see it as a good thing and on in if you if it's scalable yes it's a good thing you want to have multicultural but if you do too much at once you don't allow any type of assimilation to take place, meaning you don't get you lose America's identity where you talk about freedom, you talk about liberty, you talk about fairness, equality, and then you start bringing in and, and you lose control, you lose the grasp of of being able to spread those American values on onto other, you know, on, onto people, new people immigrating to the country. But I'm, I'm getting sidetracked with the with the crypto. Um, so they want this digital dollar. They want us all. They want to track every single dollar they can spend because they want to control every single dollar spent. And um, and also, I just I've been reading an article. I can't find it. I can't find it again, but it's out there. Um, what they're saying it now is that uh, people with anti authoritarian views are are now more interested in um in in cryptocurrency and when i was reading it i'm like well then quit being an authoritarian i mean uh. you are a this is supposed to be a democracy and people what they've seen is that people who in countries that are more democratic they're 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 trusting their own currency uh more than than crypto but people in authoritarian countries are trusting the uh the crypt are putting more trust in cryptocurrency so it's ass backwards pretty much so so as america continues to spend more money out of control you know the debt's out of control as america tries to control our every movement our every tax they're raising taxes back to the digital dollar they've been flirting with this idea for years talking about negative interest negative interest is where they tell the bank okay well, normally we give you money and then you can give money for having a savings account, right? And you get like, you know, last year we saw it go down to 1%. It used to be 2%. It used to be even as high as, uh, what was it? 5% back in the day, right? I think it was that high. Damn. I don't remember. And so you were, you were incentivized to save. And, um, but we have starting, started to change our behaviors and, and, you know, it was our fiscal monetary policy that changed all that it was okay we're going to give you less um savings so now people are like okay well i get more money if i go into the stock market that's why you see you know a lot of retail investors whatever but anyway so now they they have i mean for years they've been flirting with this idea of negative interest meaning if you have your money in a bank 
we're actually going to charge you for having your money in the bank. So now the federal reserve gets like, they print the money, they give it to us. And then we have to give them the money back just because the bank is holding it. And so they can't do that right now. They know that if they do that with the banks, people are just going to pull all their money out of the banks and banks are going to go to you. Keep it the mattresses, the socks, you name it. Yeah. I I mean, (laughs) it's and people yeah so people don't i mean we're not going to do that we're not gonna just let the government do it but if they go with the digital dollar they control it all so just mm. by the flip of a switch they can say hey negative zero eduardo negative zero brett nothing for you yeah yeah Yell alone you have 50 g saved up nothing yeah and and i think it's gonna be come around the the tax time i think that you're gonna be looking and expecting a refund and then they're gonna they're going to throw in that digital dollar um, negative interest and they're going to say, okay, we're going to have to deduct what you would have been returned. This is your negative interest. Or maybe they just do it each month. Hey, this is your fee that you're doing. And, you know, they have, we have right now, what, 330 million Americans um, that hmm. they can collect all those fees with. So it's a mess. And so uh, th- this world of crypto and basically, I mean, here's how it works. Like, so, so, the way okay we have civil forfeiture we have where if if a business turns in too much cash at a bank like ten thousand is supposed to be the mark but but if uh the clerk suspects you know has any suspicions or someone has any suspicions that there could be you know like oh i i you know he says he's a um a seamster you know or a seamstress they say they're a seamstress but uh I don't think I've never seen them with any clothes. So, yeah. but they just gave me a deposit of uh, of you know eight thousand bucks. Well, then all of a sudden you get the feds coming in and they they go to the the business, they seize everything. Now this person is out of the business, and then what they do is they say, well, we can't find any any evidence of illegal activity, but it, under civil forfeiture laws, they get to keep the money. They get to keep it. And so you, the only way you can get it back is if you take them to court, which costs a no lot of money. money. And now they have all your time. money. Yeah. And so um, and so then what they'll what they might do is they might say, OK, well, you know what? We'll give you half of your money back if you settle. You know, we can <sighs> we can just uh, call this good and we'll just settle it. And uh, and then a, a lot of people have done it just because they can't afford to go to court. So, again, uh, America, they are, are, they're really pushing us in this direction. And all I want to do is I just want to let people know with, with cryptocurrency, what it is, the fact that there is freedom out there in this new day and age, and that you don't have to be beholden to what the government says you have to do. You don't, you don't have to use the dollar. If, if we collectively uh, in, in strength and numbers, override our our government's policy we can we can definitely do that uh yeah. we've done that in in so many other uh things uh, so many other protests in our lives in our country's history that uh, eventually they have to if they can't get the support i mean what are they going to do put troops on every every doorstep um so you know i it's just uh, i guess it's a it's a cool way to make some money get in early Right. If you get in early, that's where you make your money. But then also, as this technology takes on over, um, it it sort of has this ability to sort of keep our government in check because really it's just it's out of control. Um, yeah, I Biden, think that's good to keep them on their toes and all that, too, because there's always going to be a way or someone will find a way to go around that shit. Because at the end of the day, I think it's going to benefit everybody. They don't I, I can assure you people don't want the government to take full control of everybody's money because that's just like, fuck, no, it's not like me handing somebody that I don't fucking know Joe Schmo that works over there. I can just flip that one switch or do whatever and go away with all the money that I saved up. See what I'm saying? Right. It's like that simple as it can be. And that's, I mean, I, I don't doubt it if they want to go to this digital dollar. I mean, it just makes logical sense that they just want control. So fuck yeah. not. But one China, question I want to ask, yeah. I want to ask though. So if, if we do go to digital, a digital dollar, let's just say hypothetically, I wonder how the rappers are going to throw the money in the videos from there. <laughs> <laughs> Laptops or the, yeah. the little, the, the, your little USB drive that you're yeah, hanging the little, the Yeah, little just you're, tossing them all out. Yeah, just tossing them. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, 
I, I think they'll they're pretty creative. They'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah, they'll figure something out. Oh, I, I don't know. I just wanted. To, I, just, I was just thinking about that when you're talking about damn. It's all going to be digital, like in, in crypto, of course. But with that USB, that's your wallet. But damn, it would be like you wouldn't be able to see. Damn, that would be just crazy to just look at it like that, though. It would be a huge change to think that it's all just digitally at that point, you know? I mean, yeah. but it's not, it's it's almost the same as saying, like, you're using your debit card, you know, when you go to the store, you're not, I mean, I don't, I hardly rarely use cash. I just hate carrying it with me. So it's just a matter of tapping your debit card or sli- sliding it, or even with your fucking phone. It's great. Or your watch. Yeah. Your watch. Yeah. I mean, if you have your money loaded up on that, but dude, it's, it's wild. So it's it's almost like we're, we're m- moving towards that, like, you know, using digital currency at that point. So, well, I mean, I, I don't know, the, man, the question and he, here's where my original um, concern with with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is I said, where is the value? Where is it backed up? Where mm-hmm. like, OK, Bitcoin is at forty six thousand dollars. What is it backed by? Like the U.S. dollar <laughs> is not backed by anything but the trust that the world has mm-hmm. with the with that that form of currency. Um, but it used to be held un- until 1971. It used to be held to what was called the gold standard, meaning, you know, um, the dollar, uh, you know, had to be the the um, the value of the dollar was compared to gold. And uh, but in 1971, they ran into a crisis, and Richard Nixon. Uh, took us off the gold standard and ever since then uh, we've seen hype we've seen inflation rise we've seen the value of our dollar just um just completely erode and and like like it's so funny because a silver dollar if you buy a silver dollar uh, one troy ounce of silver that used to be a dollar but now it's it's 27 dollars you know at current That's... spot price it's 27 dollars so yeah, you know, it's so funny because you can get three troy ounces of gold, right? 20, uh, you know, 30, 60, 90. And that's almost, that's almost a hundred dollar bill with just three troy ounces of silver. It's, it's just ridiculous. Wow. I mean, and, and we've done it to ourselves. It's, um, you know, it's like, for instance, we are spending, um, okay. The revenue that, that we, that the government gets in our taxes is like, Three point two trillion dollars, um, and then, but but how much they're spending in the year is eight trillion. So, like, we are borrowing more money. We are borrowing trillions more than we are actually giving revenue for. America, it, it's a crisis that we are we are in, and I think we are in for a bumpy ride. I think we're in for a bumpy ride. So I think now is the time to protect yourself against the u.s dollar no matter how scary i mean they're gonna they're gonna attack uh um cryptocurrency with all sorts of regulations you're gonna see Mm -hmm. it china right now in the mongolian region um they are trying to crack down on bitcoin miners um which mining equipment all it is is just a bunch of hardware and it's uh the graphics cards yeah, the graphics, yeah, the graphics like a cards. Shit ton. I saw a video of that. It's it's nuts. It's like a fucking building just full of graphics cards. Yes. I'm like, that's why I can't build a fucking computer. God damn it. Shit. Yes. And but it's all and, good. I mean, it's really so, good cause, I guess. Well, let's talk about that. Being a yeah. Cardano guy, right? We pride ourselves on the fact that that we aren't using that type of electricity. We aren't mm-hmm. having whole warehouses. We are um just you, you know, creating the Cardano. And and then we are staking our money. So that's the difference between um, proof of work, which is what Bitcoin is, and proof of stake, meaning how how you verify and um, how you verify the money, the the crypto Mm -hmm. is is you get your your crypto and you stake it out. You put it out there. You expose it for the network to, to say, yep, that's a real you know, that's not a fraudulent one. That's not a fake one. That's not a fake ADA. That's not a fake ADA. It's good. Whereas uh, Bitcoin mining is proof of work where the miners are the ones that create it and and it becomes authentic to the blockchain. OK, I see what you're saying. So it's a whole different setup then. Totally different. And okay. and Bitcoin. So in, you know, in the uh, Ethereum world, like people who are uh, invested in Ethereum, people who are invested in uh, Tezos, ADA, uh, proof of stake networks, they are all just we're all sort of sitting on the sidelines waiting for Bitcoin to fall. 
That's mm. why we ask why all these P these companies are putting in billions. Well, people just don't know yet. Um, and, and like a lot of our predictions is that Bitcoin will eventually come down. We're seeing nothing in the paper about, about Bitcoin coming down. Everybody's reading about, oh, Bitcoin's going to hit a hundred thousand and it may hit a hundred thousand, but eventually once, once, the world sees how much more energy efficient, how quicker and how uh, uh, less expensive it is to use these other coins, they're going to be like, man, what are we doing with Bitcoin? You know, mm -hmm. so Bitcoin may always be around just because the OG and, you know, so we got to we got to, you know, it, it's always going to be around as maybe a, a store of value, a store of, of wealth. But but uh, but every day practical use it's it's not going to be bitcoin for sure yeah i just saw i try, I try to watch a video i need to go back and rewatch it though it's like a little 30 minute clip uh vice city did something on uh, on bitcoin and uh it just showed like a whole room full of graphics cards just yes. all working at once i'm like oh so that's where it's going because yep. you know for me i'm speaking on the terms of just you know i just bought a gaming pc not too long ago fortunate enough i was able to find a graphics card back in uh, this was like last year. It was still a pretty penny because at the time, the one that I got was the 2080 Ti. Um, at that time, was like the the highest of the highest. Now they have like the 3080s, 3070s, 3090s, I believe, mm -hmm. and they're just going out like hotcakes. They're just buying them out straight out. And right now, I think they re they're reselling for like two thousand to a thousand five hundred, which is stupid because retail prices are like seven hundred, six hundred bucks. Yeah, Crazy, yeah. Dude. Give it some time, and I think that you know, just like catalytic converters, like your oh, man. all these That's thieves steal all these catalytic converters. Um, one for and they're stealing it for the platinum that's in it well you know these new electric vehicles don't need catalytic con converters yeah. so people aren't going to be stealing those and um and i think that as people gravitate toward more proof of stake coins such as uh, cardano tezos um ethereum then people are gonna say oh okay yeah uh you can have your graphics card back we don't need it we're we're yeah. stinking we're putting it out in a different way go go get me one of the low brett maybe if you know somebody one of your crypto homies or a crypto homie slide me two graphics cards yeah <laughs> <laughs> we out here slanging slanging dude i'll do myself like two pcs yeah man it's nuts though uh it is a lot to understand even me like that's why i like asking you th these questions because maybe there's other people in my shoes that you know are probably thinking about the same questions i want to ask you or ask somebody that's really well in depth into that into that world you know so um it's it's just a really interesting just kind of wave that it's on right now where um it's 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 kind of already seeming to be it's a thing of the future you know digital currency in general so yeah oh yeah i mean i just can't wait to see what it's going to go to man i mean i'll eventually definitely jump on that wagon hopefully not too late but i mean no you're not no the party hasn't even started yet and that the video i'm gonna make my next yeah. video uh, my next video is gonna be titled something along the lines of seven things every beginning crypto investor should know before they jump in something like that like i'll try to make it longer and cool. with more complicated words so it's hard to remember <laughs> <laughs> try to keep it simple too though man there's a lot of no, people no, like, that, I'm, to I'm, I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway um i'll talk that's one thing i i am planning to talk about in the video is the fact that the party literally hasn't even started yet like we are this we are in the days in crypto where the internet when the internet first started arriving where people are talking about it but people only saw it as a luxury people didn't yeah. realize that we were literally going to be dependent on it in our everyday lives it took a while for them to that man or just yes. the people in general to really think about like how can i use this but not like dame dash dame dash was said the future and said no nah, i'm using this motherfucker to my advantage Shout yeah yeah exactly yeah, so, so so yeah so if you are one of those people that that has that vision and, and mark cuban is one of those people he's the one that's already um, made that comparison he sees it he knows it um bitcoin if, uh, or i'm sorry uh elon musk with tesla um he recognizes it because he invested 1.5 billion we're Ooh. waiting to see if yeah yeah Man. we're and we're waiting to see if uh if apple we're waiting for their second quarter results to see if they invested in bitcoin um credit card companies that it's either i think it's mastercard they have said that they will now take payments in bitcoin um there's a happen here's a, a a gold and silver company that i um do business with from time to time 
and they too accept Bitcoin as a payment. So it's happening. And the people that are coming right now, like that are joining where it's called, you're called the early adopters. Um, the people that are the early adopters, we are the ones that are working out all the kinks. I mean, with, with Cardano, I'm already, they have a, a voting platform called catalyst. So I'm already voting on new um, things that where I want, want uh, the, the company to go in. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, I'm basically a, a vested um, part of this, this particular one, the number three coin by market cap company. Man. So, so what, what's this channel that uh, they, they can watch you at? I mean, we'll definitely plug it up in the description once this releases. Um, but what, what's your, the name of your page that, you know, people can find you at? It's going to be super hard to remember, but I'll try to spell it out. All right. Brett auto. <laughs> Ooh, okay. It's a hard one people. So just try to write it down. If you can, we'll give you a couple of minutes. So Brett auto. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it short and sweet. I like yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's where it's just, it's so, it's so exciting. And, yeah. you know, and on the channel, I'm not going to focus on so much of the, the government, whatever. I don't want the government to see as me as a guy. So all of a sudden CIA comes and cuts my brake lines like they're going to do for <laughs> a multiple other reasons. But if yeah. I end up dead, it's not me myself. It's certainly the government. <laughs> <laughs> that's the paranoia kicking in you see how he's looking behind his back like yeah I'll, I'll, I'm always looking. you see that window right there uh, on it the, behind him you can expect him just being jumped out of that of that uh that <laughs> yeah. fifth floor uh what is it a uh, little suite you got there <laughs> yeah. yeah that's why i gotta move from spot to spot because the shit gets hot <laughs> Dodge the cops. <laughs> damn. Is that straight off the top? All right off the top. Oh, damn, dude. It's like I said, when you don't even want to rap, you do. Oh, but yeah, man. brother. I mean, that's it's interesting shit, man. And definitely, uh, it will definitely keep bringing up those little topics here on the pod as well. Just because, like I said, I, I think there's more there's there's more momentum now to where people are just jumping on board. I know a few people meet that I, you know, keep close tabs with to talk about it or they they're invested in crypto. So it's yeah. kind of cool to hear about that stuff just to see where it's going. It's yeah, it's it's a whole new world. And if anybody has any questions, uh, yeah, feel free jump on that YouTube channel with me. I don't have any other platform. I try to keep my social media presence at, at a minimal. In fact, I even quit adding people on my Instagram page. Oh, yeah, saw that. Yeah, you <laughs> something about it. If I don't know you personally, <laughs> I will not add you, but you can follow me on the I'm just too paranoid. I mean, we live in a we live in a world where we it, everything's cancel culture, Ev cancel oh, this, dude. cancel that. And I'm like, I I'm not shy about saying what what's on my mind, right? And yeah. and if I have opinions, but a lot of my opinions sort of contrast with the mainstream media's view of things. And and I'm like, you know what? Like it's kind of popular right now just to cancel people. Yeah. And I don't want to be get get canceled yet for just some stuff that either I am joking about or I or <laughs> that I that I feel serious about it's and, too early and, for and that it just yeah. happens to be yeah yeah wait until i hit my millions first that's what i'm saying let them get a little a couple steam a little bit of a steam and then go for it then try i'll cancel ready. myself at that yeah. point i'll make sure that cancel. I'll, I'll like I'll, I'll say some crazy shit dude <laughs> but speaking of cancel culture uh they're trying to cancel uh what is our homie eminem what yeah they're going um from no what way. i can recall i think it's like a few um I'm saying it's a couple of young cats, just like younger people in general, like listen to his older shit. They're like, oh my God, Eminem said that? Eminem said this? And I'm sure he Which left the- what made him like, like, famous. You know, I'm sure because back in the days from what I can recall when, when we were listening to the Slim Shady EP and Marshall Meadows EP, which by far classic albums. Um, Cause that's the Eminem that I you know grew up listening to, you know, when I was just, you know, heavy into hip hop um, back in that time. I still am, but you know, I'm kind of trying to lean off of it a little bit. Um, Le but you're trying to lean off hip hop? No, 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 no. Like, not not major. Like, okay, what I should say is like the mainstream shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not dealing with that in that sense, but I still like more like the underground. I guess you could say. Oh, okay. that time Eminem was like he was mainstream when the thing Marshall Matters OP came out. Oh, Some yeah. shady. He was like picking up steam, but then Marshall Matters was like out there, full blown, like you know, yada yada yada. But they were saying that they listened to his music, like you know, he was letting the f word fly. I'm not talking about fuck. But yeah. you know what I'm saying? He said, he said yeah. Yeah, you know. No. Derogatory term yes. for gays. <laughs> but it was like, you know, and I'm sitting to myself thinking about this whole thing, right? And I'm like, yo, you're really going to dig up old records from Eminem back in the day, bring it up now, 2021, and just start flaming him for it. 
So is you that just because he's white? Because I don't a know. No, a lot it's, of black it's, rappers were saying the same thing. No, that's so what using I'm the same word. I don't think it's. I don't think it was based off just like uh, a bunch of uh, white people. Or if if we want to say it like that, no, it wasn't like that. It's just uh, like just younger kids in general. I don't know. It could be from just maybe Caucasians, uh, blacks. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. But Tupac I just like in to- California in in, in uh, at live and die in L. A. What what did he say about Dre in, in California in uh, live and die in L. A. Uh, California love part mother too without Dre. Yeah. Did he just say gay? He just said, he said gay, gay ass. Right? Okay. Without gay ass Dre. But that, I think you the can't effort, say that in today. The effort hits a little bit more harder, dude. I mean, well, what's like I said, well, what's crazy though, back in the day, I'm not going to lie. Like back in the day, a lot of people were using that word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot. And it wasn't never pointed at from what I can re- like recollect, you know, in a, in a way to really you know, how do you say, uh, be offensive to that particular person or it was whatever. Never meant it was that. never meant like that from what I can remember. It was viewed as a weak, as a weak, like it was view, definitely viewed as an insult. Like exactly. you didn't want to be called just one. to anybody that like, if it was one of your buddies just doing stupid shit or whatever, it was almost like equivalent to saying dumbass, stupid, whatever. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Loser. That's kind of how I looked at it. Yeah. Unless I was just saying, I didn't know what the fuck I was saying. I was like, no, oh, shit. no, you're right. That's so, exactly how no, but, it but that's used. what they're, Technically, that's what they're trying to do with them. That's literally what they're trying to do them with all this, all like just like trying to cancel them out and just bring it up. Just so bring them up. And really getting any heat because I feel like I, Eminem, what, they've been trying to cancel Eminem since, I mean, even since then. Because, oh, yeah. So oh, for sure. He was getting, dude, he was wild. He, he actually, I mean, if you want to, if you want to get down to brass tacks, he, used the n-word in his in his early music before he was signed with dre he was dating a black chick broke up with her and then uh it was a big beef that he had with the source because the source outed him someone turned in the tape where he was calling this this uh black black female one of his black uh, ex-girlfriends the n-word and Mm. uh i'm like and you know even then even what 15 years ago when i first read this i was like and he's still around that's yeah, crazy that's that but you know he just it, he he's been he's came out of all of this unscathed um so i don't that's where i just like that doesn't seem like he's just too big he's yeah. just too big what are you gonna i mean cancel him what are you gonna do what are he's you gonna already, do he's chilling man i don't think he's even worried about that shit because because like even uh that beef we had with uh i don't know some other rapper was calling him out to like box him and shit just from like Machine old past beef. kelly <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i really don't know i mean maybe i really don't remember who the, who it was i'm just horrible remembering names but like it's it's the same shit with that he just probably doesn't give a fuck he's just chilling kicking back like yeah. i'm dude i'm already old I, i'm older you know i'm not really about that i'm not trying to put myself out that in that type of way so it is what it is you guys can say all you want whatever you know I'd i did be, my thing yeah, that's it i want to know though like you know if if this is real like if if anything is gonna come of it because again you know i'm i'm i think america is growing tired of this thing i was just in fact reading an article um from the rap about bill maher talking about this whole thing um let's see what what does it say he uh it says that uh well so it says he dove in into the deep end of controversy, this time saying he's had his fill of awareness campaigns that remind people of everything from breast cancer to Alzheimer's and Black Lives Matter. And so in quotes, he says, it's time to raise awareness about a very serious problem. Raising awareness. We raise too much of it. It's <laughs> making us anxious and depressed. And then, uh, and then he says, w- must we be sad about everything all the time, most of which we can't do anything about? the ads the hashtags it's like the person on the plane is the next seat that won't take a hint that you don't want to talk <laughs> yeah and like we were saying digital the digital era man it's it's since then like i feel like you know people do have voices to do you know bring up some serious shit and i'm all for that sure but it's like if it's just like a, a continuous thing where we're constantly picking up the just all the bs all the negativity it's just like the same with life before all this shit. There, I mean, there was a bunch of stuff like this going on even before then, but now it's more like in your face, straight at you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's just wild, dude, to see that transformation from back then till now because everything's just so more exposed. I mean, we have these things to really put everything like, bam, it's happening there on the spot. Now we know about it. But it's like, 
it's like rewatching the same movie over and over and over again. It's like, yeah. damn, dude, I get, are we really, is, are things ever going to change? Are we actually going to, you know, stop with the bullshit and just say, damn, we, okay, let's admit to the problems and the issues that are really happening. Yes. But, you know, come to a fucking solution at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like enough, mm-hmm. enough is a showing it, but let's just actually do something about it. So it's One just crazy. Thing I was thinking about is, you know, I have friends that are, um, that are white, that are Hispanic, that are black and even gay, right? I have friends, uh, uh, full spectrum. And so because I'm friends with these people, I get comfortable about things. I get comfortable saying things. Like I say things to you and you say things to me that we're, we're comfortable with each other, that we can say things. But then if, say, some of our conversations were to be um, online, right? Say we were to be like, oh, yeah, you know, we were talking about yada, 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 fill in the blank. Things that you and I are never going to be offended about just because we know each other. You know that yeah. no way am I a racist, a bigot, uh, whatever you want to call. But all it takes is some person who's been unexposed to the world, who ha- absolutely knows no diversity whatsoever, um, but has a, la- a, a large platform. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to cancel someone who has more diversity than that than they ever will. And 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 it's just a game. Yeah, and you know nice. so then all of a sudden you know a guy like me can lose my whole career my whole you know my whole setup everything i could lose everything just because someone was offended at something that i said to somebody else who had took no offense whatsoever yeah but because oh well i also identify as this same category and i am offended all of a sudden that's the rule the rule is that you you can you know like like uh sticks and stones may break break my bones but words will never hurt me but then you know those were always the things we said as kids well now yeah. you know in in the new era it's we have adults saying words are liter is are literally violence <laughs> you know? and it's like what what <laughs> when, when like you're not dealing with any problem solving techniques you're you're making everybody anxiety anxious to to be with each other you know you look at someone who's different whereas before it was it was like hey what's your name what da, 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 da. but now you're turning it into where you're you're afraid of dealing with anybody who looks different than you or talks different than you or you know and because you're afraid that am i going to offend this person and they're looking at you in the same way Oh, is it? Am I going to offend that person? And so this cancel culture mob has just turned us all into enemies from each other. And, and literally we're going in the opposite direction of where we're supposed to be working with each other. Yeah. And, you know, but again, Unity, this baby. is why we talked about having the podcast. We recognized this years ago. Yeah. We're like, dude, we got to show that people from different backgrounds, different perspectives, different political leanings, different whatever can sit down in a Chop room or, you know, or virtually, virtually uh, we can, course. we can sit down together and and there's still so many there's still more that brings us together there's still oh, yeah, more that ton, brings dude. that we have in common than our differences exactly and we yeah. work through the differences and we align through the 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 similarities i just think this whole thing just everything that's been going on like especially last year like we were all talking about it but we never really like brought out what really is the fucking issue and like what can we do to resolve it i don't think we even got to the step of even realizing we have a fucking issue i think think that's how i look at it that's how i look at it doesn't it seem to you that the whole game is just to is just to put people out of business like uh, i was the bachelor i just heard the story about the bachelor where um this lady um she was half hispanic half white and she there was pictures of her just a few years ago going to college where she was in the um the antebellum type dress Mm. but but they had view and the guy the bachelor is black Mm. right and so then so she dresses in this antebellum dress which is like uh you know the the plantation era uh type dress Mm. and again she's half hispanic half half white and uh and so there were people in the the woke culture mob that cancel culture mob that that jumped or pounced on her and said look that's racist that's racist everything is racist everything is racist they called her a racist they had i think they kicked her off the show somebody who had defended her had to backtrack and say oh i'll never mind i changed my mind i'm not defending her anymore 
uh, it really she shouldn't have wore that. And she had no idea. She was just doing this thing that it was just the culture, not everything about the, the plantation culture and, and history is all based on race. But that but they've minimized it. This culture mom has minimized it to where it's all about race. That's all it's about is race. And it's just so now this this girl, this young girl has just ex been exposed to this world in a way that she never even like she had no thoughts of, of racial thoughts at all. And the guy that she wanted to marry was black. All because and, of a fucking dress. And then and, and some. Yep. Some somebody got mad with enough Twitter followers and they canceled that ass. Wow. It's for a fucking insane. dress. Yes. So that's what's crazy. She just say for anything. that. Just for that. Just for that. Yep. It could be a fuck for me. It could be a fucking, I don't know, a green shirt. Well, they keep moving the goalpost. They keep moving <laughs> like, the goalpost. Fuck, it's man. only a matter of time before you and I are going to be held to this. Uh, we we're going to be canceled someday by when the vegans like the Bill Gates, the followers of Bill, oh, Bill Gates um, start taking his, signing up for his cult. And we're not allowed to eat meat anymore. Oh, and dude, then anybody the who did eat meat is canceled. That's the one thing canceled. we're going to go down for, baby. Eating steaks burgers hot dogs you name it because i have that shit on my feet it. on instagram that's what i'm gonna get taken down oh, for i'm good like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm just gonna keep on eating it man it is what it is i mean i might eat healthier yeah of course when i need to but you know i'm not gonna give a nice little sirloin steak away with the wine like we did last weekend on episode uh, right <laughs> <laughs> oh dude yeah, we insane. uh uh i want i want to i want to redirect to a just a, a different topic but that clip by all means um thank you for everybody that's watched and commented and just uh shared that video it's it's been a real good hit man and it's it's funny because <laughs> it's you know just just kind of you know kind of going off of what you were saying like you know we two people from different cultures me and you you know we come you know do this podcast you know we were in the mix we were having a good time jiving you know drinking some wine that's literally the representation of what it is like just you know talking and just that's having a good time we want and it's uh but but <laughs> the, the shit you were saying though it was so funny and, and it, like i said the clip itself when, when i first made it and i was kind of like you know editing on on, on the on the editing tip <laughs> it, i just started buzzing out laughing because it's like i know you said that before but you actually brought it back where it just kind of reminded me like fuck you know <laughs> It's fucking dude, you're a wild boy. Dude. That vino hit that night. I'm not even lying. Like I'm like, whoa. It did. Yeah. It's pretty strong. It was pretty strong. <laughs> and I mean, to to remember that we fucking were drinking energy drinks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I'm like, oh shit. And that's I why I'm like, I was feeling kind of mine. I was feeling a little bit like a little bit buzz. Like, oh shit, this is pretty strong. But it was good stuff, man. It was good stuff. <laughs> uh, I just want to bring that up and just that's say so that funny. you know. It, it, that's it, awesome. Uh, I'm glad people like that. That's yeah. cool. I mean, that's that's essentially what we are trying to do. We're trying to be the anti cancel culture. We're trying to be yeah. the inclusive culture where yeah. you can say things without getting canceled. You can we just you know, we understand we're just being funny. We're just yeah. being funny. Or at least try to be, you know what I'm saying? I mean, shit. No, we I mean, are funny. funny. We are funny. Okay, and if funny. you will cancel you, if you don't find us funny, <laughs> we will cancel you. <laughs> we will cancel you. <laughs> canceled <laughs> we need to make that we need to make that a sound bit yeah um dude i want to just i think we can i think we can talk about this okay i think about Shoot. our Shoot next it. episode oh yes yes, 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 yes. Woo! yes yes this one hit it with it folks, hit it with it we are about to level up in a way that um you ain't ready <laughs> oh, I'm not ready, uh, uh, but I want, like, I know I have to be, and I'm excited because I know, like I said, I've talked to a few people about just what we're, we're going to say or what we're going to go into here a little bit. Uh, they're excited too. They're really looking yeah. forward to this next episode. And especially because this is, this one is going to be uh, in a studio, uh, in studio session. So definitely yes. uh, stay tuned for that one. So we're going to be actually in the studio. Yep. Um, but I mean, let's, let's, let's but, jive with it. Yeah. What's up? So, uh, you know, there's a guy I know that I, that I talk to on a semi-regular basis. And uh, recently I found out that he was a Bigfoot hunter. And heard uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bigfoot, the Yeti, the mysterious Sasquatch. creature possibly wandering around here, the Pacific Northwest in the trees. Yeah. The Bigfoot. And, and I'm like, 
no way, you know, yeah. no way, no way. And he goes, no, I'm serious. And he started showing me pictures, pictures of all these things. He's telling me areas he can't, you know, he can't reveal where he's he's mm -hmm. going, but he's showing me footprints in the Pacific Northwest that are just huge. And and I asked him, would you come to the podcast? Would you share this? And he said, not only will I share it, but I'm going to bring documents. I'm going to bring, Oh podcasts. baby. I'm going to bring videos. Oh baby. So we are going to, we are going to watch videos We are he's going to tell us so much about Bigfoot. And I just, I, I ran it by Eddie. I'm like, Eddie, this oh. is what I got. You know, dude, I was fucking open arms. Like baby, let's, on the Tip Ticks podcast, we're fucking diverse. We're fucking trying to hit all yes. ends, baby. We're, we're no fucking winter it. Point, like I always keep saying, dude. Let's so, fucking do it. I am just, I am looking so forward to this, this episode and this interview and the fact that we are literally going to have in studio a real life Squatch Hunter. <laughs> real life. I mean that has actually interacted with them. I mean, it's the stuff that he's been telling me is so juicy. Yeah. And I'm like, this is amazing. I like, this is amazing that someone I know has interacted with, with Bigfoot. That's his claim. Oh, man. And I'm just jealous that you got to hear a little bit of it. I'm just still like in the unknown. Cause I mean, of course, like we've all heard of the legendary Bigfoot, the Yeti, the, the, what do they call it? The, the frog man or the, not the frog man, the, the skunk man. I think that's one like in the Mississippi South area or something like that. Okay. But uh, there's, there's different variations from what I know, from what I remember when I was watching like these little shows or documentaries talking about uh, the legendary Bigfoot. But I know here, especially here on the area where we're at, there's uh supposedly there's been sightings. There's been people that supposedly have heard their, their, uh, their actual like wild call and, and I've uh, seen these yeah. footprints. So even for me, I'm, I'm very interested in stuff like that just because like, you know, dude, if, if we don't know what, sh what else is in here in the sea, I mean, the, the, the ocean, whatever you want to call it, of course, it's a whole different thing for being on land and on the ocean. I get it. Yes, yes, yes. But I mean, dude, there's shit out there that we don't fucking know. Hey, man. I mean, it's, it's our duty. I feel like it's our duty to bring it to the people to where we're going to go on this journey together. We're going to bring it to yeah. you. You know, hey, so. you can believe it. You can make fun of it. You can love it. You can ride with it. Doesn't matter. Our role in this whole thing is that if we know about it yeah. and they're willing to talk about it, yeah. we are going to provide that platform. And especially mix it with goal. a little bit of liquor, the conversation is oh, going to be good. Oh, man. <laughs> a little bit of liquor and the story gets thicker. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I have to find like a, I know you're going to have to wear your fucking, um, your Bigfoot hat. I need to find something that's going to be like, yes, you know, something, rocking something like that, you know. Maybe like a Chewbacca, hat, like a like a Chewbacca. No, go to that shirt company something. that. Remember that old hat that I had? Yes, yes, it's yes, a yes. really good. Yeah, and I don't know. Yeah, what you got to shoot me that, that link uh, off off uh, off the air. Um, I definitely want to fit into the occasion. You know what I'm saying? Oh, dude, this is so definitely, definitely. A, an occasion worth celebrating. So, oh, dude, uh, awesome. he's he's gonna bring a guy with him um, that oh, has sweet. been so on two every, guys. two dudes. Ooh, yep, two dudes. Session, baby. Videos, documents, pictures, you name it. So we got all the heat. We got Dude. we got more Fuck juice yeah. than you can handle. More juice to get loose. <laughs> more juice than Pac. R. So R. Pac. yeah, R. that R. that is the tip touch era. This is the this is the tip touch in your face. We are bringing it to your attention. Nice. All right, so we'll leave it on that note. I'll we'll leave it on a suspense, suspenseful note. Uh, but of course, uh, with all that being said, definitely go check out all our previous content on all major streaming platforms. Go to our Instagram at the Tip Podcast. You will have a link that could direct you to everywhere where we're at. Uh, it's just a matter of clicking it. Boom. It'll show you everything where you can find the Tip Podcast. But we'll catch you on the next one. Till then, take care, everybody. Be safe out there. Peace.